of Sri Sri Anantadas Bhavachi Maharaj Sri Sri In this Tripadi Sri Lathakur Mahasaya first glorifies the food dust of the Vaishnavas. With one voice of all the scripture proclaims the extraordinary glories of the food dust of the Vaishnava through which devotion and experience in Vaishnava is attained. In Shumat Bhagavatam, the essence of the O Vedanta, Brahmarishi Jagabharata said, Maharaja Rahaguna, O King Rahaguna, without being sprinkled by the food dust of the saints, penance, performance of the Vedic duties, donation of food and so on, charitable building of the houses, Studying the Vedas, the worship of water, fire, or the sun, will not help to attain the truth about the God. Shri Prahlada Mahasaya told his father, Hirani Kashyap, As long as one is not showered by the food dust of the saints, that are totally free from material edification, no one can become aware of the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. No person of faults, mischief, will automatically disappear by becoming fixed in the lotus feet. In the order to test the mood of goodness, in the three deities, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, Brigamuni kicked the chest of the Lord Narayana, causing Lord Narayana to say, Oh, your food, water is sacred water, so sacred that sanctify even the holy waters of places of pilgrimage. All the universe would reside within my body, and all the pl planetary maintenance that are with me have now been purified by the food water. May your glories remain unexpastable. Oh, I am eagerly holding the dust that displays your footmarks on my chest. I have given it place on my chest, also with the goddess of fortune. 
So that the Vedas call me by the name Shivatsa Lakchana. So in this sloka, Naratam Dasta could explain the importance of the food dust of the Vaishnavas. Adorn your body with the food dust of the Vaishnavas. There's one festival in Radhakun is called Danda Mahotsa. This festival is when uh, the what is they they bring so much dust in the temple. Sand. Then they start doing a very, very uh, long kirtan and dancing on this dust. And then, after maybe three hours of dancing and singing on this dust, everyone starts taking this dust and put on their heads. They start roll also. So this happens once a year, this festival. But when we come to the darshan of the Guru Dev, we are touching his feet and then we put our head. So, we are taking the dust from the Guru Maharaj feet and put on our head. So, this is the one way to completely purify self with all the things. So, when we are doing Parikrama, when we are touching by our head, we are making obeisances, we are taking some dust. So, this is a practice. <laughs> the Shastra said this working. <laughs> this system is working. So we want to be, become purified. So there is a different uh, way to do that. So here Naratam Dastakur explained by very effective way. It's not so difficult to take some dust and put on the head. It's so easy. <laughs> not complicated at all. But this will give us so much realizations and uh, um, so much knowledge. It is also showing our humility. If somebody proud, he will not do that. Touching somebody's feet or... So it is showing also that the Vaishnavas, they are very humble and they are showing their humility by touching the feast of each other. I have seen many times devotees trying to touch feet of each other and the devotees run back and said, no, no. <laughs> they try to touch feet and no one, no, no one is giving <laughs> the feet to touch. So it's like a, like a play, they start like this, running after each other and trying to touch them. <laughs> This happens sometimes, because they know, if they are trying, this means they, they have some, some knowledge about how it works. Adorn your bodies with the food dust of Vaishnava, so you will gain transcendental experience. So what experience do we want? Everyone wants to have an experience, so this life is an experience. So we've been trying to do different things. Experience us, ourselves like a children, and then we go to school, we experience the school, and then we try family, we experience the family, we try friends, relationship with friends. So we, we have many experiences in this life. But what is the final experience everyone wanted. So the question is, what is the experience that every single person will desire? And every person in this world, they want to have 
eternal life, you can say is the immortality. But not in this physical body. Because this physical body can live for some time, maybe 130, 150 years also. Eventually we have to give up this body and get a new one. So that's not very practical to, to have an experience in this body. So we want a body which will never get old, eternally young. And the Vedas, they are offering a solution. So there is a world where is everyone eternally young. So. Our Goswamis, our six Goswamis, they all enter to that world, they become eternally young and they stay there until now. Mahaprabhu, he came to show the way how to, we can go to this world and get this experience where we can live eternally in a, all this young body and what we do there in this body. The question is, what, what will be the life there? And like in this world, we are all looking for relationships, right? With friends, with relatives, loving relationships where we can uh, love and be love in return. And we want that unconditional love. So we, when, when we see that somebody loves us, but he says, I love you, but <laughs> if you don't do that, <laughs> I won't love you anymore. <laughs> so this is a conditional love. So we try that one also. And I'm sure that nobody is satisfied with that type of love when it is like a bargain. I love you for this. <laughs> you don't give me this, I don't love you. It's like we are selling our love and buying our love for things. So this is a self, selfish love. It's a conditioned love. When husband and wife, they get married, they promise to each other, I promise you do this, that, that, that. And when one of them not, prom not keep the promise, it, ah, ah, you don't love me anymore. <laughs> you don't keep your promise. So we put a condition from the very first day. This is the condition we put on each other, also in friendship. I'm your friend forever, but if you do something stupid, you betrayed me, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. So it's a lot of condition, this world is a lot of condition. So what is the other option we have? The other world, where is love, is different. There's no condition there. Radharani and Krishna, they love each other unconditionally. The gopis, they really want to make Krishna happy and they're ready to go to even hell for that. The story when Krishna have a headache and the gopis are saying, how we can help you? He didn't say anything. He didn't want to say it. <laughs> They went to Purnamasi and asked, how we can help to Krishna? Purnamasi is a guru there, who is, who is taking care of all the Prajabas. So, they said, you, you need to give a dust from your feet to Krishna. So that will, that will save his headache. You see, this, this story is directly connected. That even Krishna thinking he can be relieved from the headache, be purified from the dust of the feet of his devotees. 
Even what he is seeing, that will be purified. So, it is, it is good, it works for God also. <laughs> Taking the dust from the feet of the devotees helps to God. So, and uh, in this situation, his headache is actually stops. So, but uh, when Purnamasi said this, she said that you know what will be the punishment if you are taking the dust from your feet you give to Govinda, you will go to hell. The Gopi said, no problem. If it's help him, if he his headache will be relieved a little bit at least. We are, we are okay to go help. See, this is selfless. In this world, if somebody... Oh, if you do this, you'll go to jail for 25 years. <laughs> no one will say, Oh yes, yeah, sure, I will go to jail, no problem. <laughs> if it's help for the... Relieve somebody's headache, I'll go to jail for 25 years. Nobody will do that here. Because we, we don't know how to love unconditionally. Since this whole world is based on conditioned love. Very few times some unconditional love appears here. As a glimpse, as a reflection of a love in the other world. So because Krishna he wants to show that this love what kind of love is that? He, he arranged some kind of uh, experience, some kind of stories, so we can get some kind of idea. So when somebody can ready to give up their life for loving someone, so that's happens sometimes. So the world where we are planning to go, everyone loves Krishna, Radha, Sakis, Andres, unconditionally, between, between all of them unconditional love. So many people who love each other unconditionally and forever. Sounds like fairy tale, right? <laughs> but if we trust to the Vedas, they said, right on this place, Vrindavan, in the another dimension, where is all this lila going on? This eternal life there, eternal love, selfless love, unconditional love, forever. So all we are gathering here to get that experience. So Naratam Dastakur is saying, if you want to get this experience, try to get some dust from the lotus feet of the books. <laughs> This is how you get the experience. So, very easy process. That's why we come to, uh, every day we come to darshan of Guru Maharaj and we touch. Sometimes we just touch by head, it's easy. You don't even use the hand, you just do it like this. <laughs> so, it's like, no dust wasted on the way. <laughs> you just go by touching the so, also you have seen that uh, devotees, they doing like this. Somebody walks and they do like this. See? They know something. It's not just they copy other devotees. They know that just doing this, give everything. It's a very powerful process very effective. By constantly performing bhajana, in the company of the saints, you will be purified and ignorance will be destroyed. So the one thing is dust. So we already understand this is a very powerful thing. So there is another thing, Naratam Dastakur is advise us to do. It is a constantly performing bhajana. So what is bhajana? 
By living in Raj town, we are doing the best bhajan. Because we also have sadhu sangha. We have association with devotees. We hear the kirtans everywhere. Here kirtans stop, here start. Everyone is singing there and there. So, what is the bhajan? Bhajan is to singing, chanting, listening, the singing, and listening the stories of Krishna. And living in Vraj. If we cannot live in Vraj, we can live in our mind in Vraj. If sometime we go going outside of this place. So, we can close eyes and thinking, I'm still in Munger Raj Mandir. Yes. Going to Arati, going for Darshan. Our mind is a very powerful machine. In our dreams we can do so many things. And sometimes we are looking, uh, when we are going in some kind of train or bus or plane, we look in the window and then we lost. We went somewhere. So everyone has this ability to travel in the mind. So we just need to use that consciously. And close your eyes and come and live here. The body will come automatically here. The secret is to live here, is to live here in the mind. And then the body will be moved. Wherever is the mind, the body will come there. This is the rule. So if we are living in our mind someplace else, doing something else, we are still planning something. We are planning to have new experience, new life, new person, new partner, new job, all kinds of things. Desires that keep coming and we imagine in our mind, we actually doing it in our mind, something, all the time. Our mind is busy constantly about making our future. So, and if our mind, in the same country where our body, doing something, so we are planning and creating that future, to be more in that country, doing more things. But if we are putting our mind in Rajdam and live here, then sooner or later body will come here and also start living here. And then all the aspects of bhajan automatically easily can be fulfilled. In the West, where you can hear Kirtan? Or where you can hear Katha? On daily basis. Sometime, somebody is coming, give lectures, some festival, in some city, sometime. It's very little, very little, it's nothing. Very less. So it's not sufficient. It's only maybe 10% of the time happening. But the other 90%. He keeps mind in, in all kinds of material things. And the next incarnation will be depends on what is our mind in percentage doing. What, what our mind busy in? In Kirtan, Svaran, listening, singing, chanting, or in other things, which is also seems to be very important. And without this thing, we cannot live. But this mind is the only way how we can enter to that another world. So, wherever we direct this mind, wherever our consciousness will go also. So, here is Naratam Dasakur saying, constantly performing bhajan. He didn't talk about 10%, he won the whole hundred. <laughs> Constantly, means the whole time. So the easiest way to be constantly in bhajan is to be in Rajdam. It's very effortlessly. Anywhere you go, some kirtan lecture, 
so, some chanting. Everyone you see is chanting. Everyone vegetarian. The whole city is vegetarian. So easy to do bhajan here. So that's why best bhajan is Vrajbas. Is the best bhajan. So concentrate your form in bhajan. You will not understand. Hmm? Vraj Bas not understand. Means living in Raj. Means uh, constantly staying here. At least to plan this for the future. Maybe not now. Maybe after five years, ten years, twenty years. But if we want to enter to the another world where is eternal selfless love, eternal youth. So this is the way how we can do that. Million lives we was doing other things. So why not to take one life to get something very uh, rare, very valuable? Why not? So how many lives we spend already trying to have the best relationships, best type of body, best type of house, best type of jobs. <laughs> it never works. <laughs> it's like a mirage. It's like soon, soon I'll get this best relationship, best house, best country. It's a mirage. We're always going, going there. And when we get there, we want something else. Why, why we want more? Because it's not perfect. We want perfect. The soul wants perfect relationship, perfect place to stay, perfect body. So unless we get that, we're never going to be satisfied. We're always going to be, no, I don't have this. I need more. <laughs> because this is the nature of the soul. Soul wants the best. So we have to find what is the best in this whole creation. What is the best place to be? Best body to have? Best relationship? And then just go there. Why waste time? We did already. We waste so much lives, millions of lives. So doing bhajan is like sitting next to the door to another world and knock him to the door. <laughs> Sometime entering, but for that we need our spiritual form. Sometimes they let in, and then you go in for five minutes, you go out, and then you again knock him. But many are entering there. Because so many people here. Because there are many doors here. And everyone knocking. And everyone trying to get in. <laughs> yes. The main, main door for everyone is their own Guru Maharaj. So it is, where is the door located? Through the heart of the Guru. Inside the heart there is a door. And then you enter. Then you enter this another world. And doing bhajan means serving Guru. Become devoted to Guru. Because uh, if we want to become trusted in that other world, because it's all, uh, it's all relationship. Relation means trust. So how we can gain the trust? How we can gain trust of Radha Krishna? So that they led us to their very um, personal life. Radha Krishna has very private life. The most private. Nobody can enter there. Demigods also cannot enter. The gods, if they need to enter, they have to reincarnate as a human, do the bhajan, become humble, and take the shelter of a guru going through so many things, then they can enter to that 
another world. So, we need to get trust of Radha Krishna. How we can do that? If we cannot see them. So, they are sending one representative and say, Alright, you want to trust, you want to develop devotion and uh, we want to check you, how much we can trust you. So, here is one person we send for you. If you, if you develop devotion towards this person, surrender, and we will test you through this person. This is the Guru Dev. Then, if this trust will come to the representative of Radha Krishna, then they will say, oh, there's a good relation between this new person and our representative. So, we can trust now because there's some trust is between them, so we can trust more to this person. Also, in the devotional life, our close friends, our relatives, our husbands, our wives, they are also sent by Radha Krishna to us to develop this trust and to develop the selfless love. Because that's what is the entry ticket. We can enter that world if we have that selfless love. Because that world is full of selfless love. So if we develop this love, we can enter there. But how we can develop the selfish love? Radha Krishna send us Guru, so we can selflessly serve, not demanding, not waiting, not expecting anything in return. And Radha Krishna send us our relatives, our friends, our God brother, God sister, so we can develop selfless love to them. Not demanding, not waiting, not expecting anything. Serving, but not expecting. unconditionally. So we can try and learn how to love unconditionally. It's like a training. And when the conflict came, it means there's come conditions. It means it's not selfless. If there's some selfishness. Conflict means selfishness. If anywhere conflict there, means selfishness has come up. So we have to work with it and make it selfless. Try it again, ask forgiveness, try to do the same thing again, try to serve more and more self. It's a training, it's a long time process. You are cooking for someone, and then you offer, then you give. Or you are Somebody asks you buying something and you go with bought and give. Do you want something in return? Thank you. Or maybe another gift. Or how nice you are. Do we want something in return? If we want something, means it is selfish. In some degree. I was saying that if we perform some kind of service for somebody, our close friends, relatives, if we we waiting for something in return, some kind of appreciation, some kind of thank you, some kind of uh, gratitude, some kind of uh, gift maybe in return, some kind of action in return, it means this condition. And we become angry and unsatisfied when this not happen. <laughs> this is the nature of mind. When we do something, we are already planning to get something. And if we not getting that, what we was planning to get, we get angry, unsatisfied, and then conflicts are starting. This is where the conflicts are starting. So in that other world, whenever somebody do something, they just do. They do not wait anything in return. No even think.
So here we can train. This is a good, good choice to to train to love selflessly everyone around, not waiting anything. So whenever we do something for somebody, we should ask question: Do I do this just like that, or do I want something in return? So we should tell the truth to ourselves and test ourselves because depends on this test our entrance to that another world so if we develop this selfless love and service they will see oh this person is now completely selfless want nothing in return from no one all right it's our person we want this person in this world. <laughs> so, by constantly performing bhajan, so bhajan is selfless service to others. When we chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, what we do? We are repeating the names of Radha and Krishna. Why? Because they like it. Because they love it. They want to hear their names. We chanted their names. Because they enjoy it to hear their, each other's names. So, we are, do we want something in return? We should ask, what we want back? Some good? Good health maybe? or better facilities, better husband, better wife. <laughs> we pray to God, what we, do we want something in return for that? We always subconsciously have some desires. So whenever desires come in, to whom they are desires address? To God. If we get any single desire, it means we ask something from God. From Radha Krishna. Any of our desires, it is kind of a bargain. I chant, I pray, and I have desire. I want something back. So, so it's an art how not to desire. And it takes a long time to get to that level on daily basis. So, we need a lot of practice. Writing down the desires. Whenever you get any desire in the head, write them down. See how many you get per day, <laughs> per week. This all demands from God actually. That's what it is. We demand it. I do for you, you do for me. It is condition, it is selfish. So once we don't have any desires for ourselves, then we can enter that world. Once you got empty list every day, you will have another list. I want serve in this way, in that way, in that way, in that way. See, see how our Goswamis they write. They write like this. I dream I want to serve to make a garland for Radharani to massage Radharani's lotus feet. All they want is to serve. So desires are there, but they are not to gain something, but to give something. So we can have the desires, but to give something. Also, when we are amongst the devotees, we can desire to do something for somebody. I want for this devotee a gift or help or uh, maybe give some advice or show by my example something that the devotee can learn. So the many desires can come in our mind. So how we can serve to one devotee, two devotee, fifty devotee, hundred devotee, thousand devotees. The more devotees, the better. 
desire to serve more devotees of it. So when we completely going to be lost in these desires, that will be just a, like a river, like a stream of river. That anything you think, you are thinking for others. There is nothing for, I want to get something from these people. Zero. They are thinking, I want to give this, this, that, and that, and that. I want this, this, to give to this person, to this. I want to help in this person. There is constantly going to be thinking, do something for somebody. And the feeling to give somebody, it's a, it's a, it's a joy, it's a happiness. So, you have this feeling and you won't get anything in return, so you're not going to suffer. Because we are suffer only when our expectation do not come true. Yes, there are many, many, many subtle things. <laughs> yes. So, so we will take time to completely uh, purify this. But this is this is what we do here. We can take our time and do that. That is the budget. What he's saying here. Because somebody may think, bhajan, you chant, you uh, listen, and you, you... We may do this, but if in relationships we are on demand all the time, expectations, anger, whatever you chant and you <laughs> preach, <laughs> it will be not very effective. Because the main thing what they want is selflessness. All this chanting and listening is just to get that feeling. This is what is love is. This is what is prem is. And all the bhajan process is just to get into this river, constant river of living for someone, for somebody, for, for devotees, for Guru, for Radha Krishna, and to become um, constantly being in that river, not getting out of the river. Make it this a normal of life. Make it as a as a, your lifestyle. Lifestyle of living in the river. <laughs> Devotional river. We are scared to get in the river. You know when in uh, Ganga somebody come in the morning. It's very cold. Like you put in feet there, ah, it's so cold. I'm afraid to go there. What to talk about swimming there all the time? It's scary. <laughs> so, same thing when we have the opportunity to go into that river of devotion, we're scared. We think, I'll be used if I do everything for everyone, they'll start just using me all the time, and I'll get nothing in return. Let them, if this is devotees, don't do that through the people who is not devotees. <laughs> You'll get in trouble. That's not that river. When we amongst the devotees, we can do that. This is what Radha Krishna waiting from us. And then, because there are no expectation, no anger coming, Bhagavad Gita said, the desires coming, and then when desire doesn't feel, you get anger. So when there's no desire for self, that there is no anger, no suffering, it's a, it's a happy life. It is the, the key to happiness, it's the secret for the happiness, constant happiness. No suffering, not in mind, not in consciousness, zero suffering. Who don't want that? Everyone wants 
By constantly performing bhajana. So we clear about what's bhajana, right? We are not parrots here. We do not just chant like parrots, talk like parents. We are living beings and we need to develop this unconditional love for everyone around. And that's what we are here for. And chanting and singing and listening katha, it is, if it's done in that mind, then it is budget. So by constantly performing bhajana in the company of the saints. So it, it, he didn't say just do it alone, forget everyone, go mountains and sit there and do bhajana. In the company of the saints. Because why it says in the company of the saints? Because you have to develop this selfless feeling. If we are alone, nobody uh, to serve, so we, it's very difficult to develop anything. Because we are very nice to each other, to, to <laughs> self. <laughs> we are serving very nicely to self. <laughs> but when there is a devotee, we can taste how selfless we are. It's a constant testing, testing, testing going on. And when there is nobody around, there is no test going on. There is no development going on. In the future, when we will enter to that world and we will serve Radha Krishna selflessly there, then this body can sit somewhere in the bhajan kutir and do chanting and smarana. But to enter there, we need to get the vibration, the feeling. Because our vibration should match to that vibration of that world. So if we have the vibration of selfless love, then we can actually do the service there. But if we don't have, we enter there, we serve to Radha and Krishna and we think, what I'll get? Is you know, she going to reward me or not? Not? So I don't do that. <laughs> don't do rewards? Okay, sorry. <laughs> I don't serve. <laughs> because if we... This here is the playground, the, the training ground to develop their love. So many devotees to train on. But the problem even amongst the devotees is that everyone has anathas. So even amongst the devotees there is very little selfless love still. This is the anarchist, the desires to get something. Actually to have any kind of desires for self, it is the anarchist. If you we see are living with the devotees, why? To test ourselves, to see this, my love is selfless or not. We exchange and we check, check ourselves. So we need you, it's not mountain forest, to become impersonal. We want to, to check ourselves that my love, because of my desire to develop loving feelings, so my love is selfless or not. How I will enter in the divine? Uh, you find out that they still be waiting something. for something. How, how you rise up? So that time we have to practice to learn from the dust of the Vaishnava how they do. Why the dust of Vaishnava is important? Because that selfless love they have and how I will get that. Because I have so much my self-love for my desire to fulfill. And we took the dust of Vaishnava, we took the bow down because the, from the nail all the energies is flowing all the time. So we touch the dust. You see everyone is wearing shocks. They don't open the feet. Why? They don't want to give that because they have to lose their energy for giving. So the every place you see the sandy people, they cover the socks. They don't want to give the, for the touch. Many don't give to touch. So the energy is flowing from the feet of Vaishnava, from the hands. So dust of the feet is 
just powerful line uh, you are touching to lotus foot. And the dust if you put on a selfless love to Otherwise, Naratam Dastakuru, he will not say he wants to perform much in the company of the saints. So, he said in the company of saints. Yeah, yeah. Company, not in the company, in the circle of devotees. Yeah. Saints, very specific. Devotee and saints means different. Sannyasi and sadhu is different. Saints means sadhu. Saint means really he not dress anything, but inside he is sent. He is not demoniac. So sense is not any covering, he is sent. So sense nature is a means scientific nature. We know need to change the clothes and show that I am a saint. It is a nature. Demon is a nature. It is sitting inside. When the saintly nature is improving, you dress anything. Woman can become also Is your inside sitting inside? The translations word saint actually in the original shloka is sadhu. And what's the description of sadhu? How we can define with sadhu? And definition is who has Kantimala, who chanting the names of Krishna, he is considered as a sadhu. So we should see everyone is a sadhu, just in case. Because maybe we think, no, this one not really sadhu, doing this, doing that. <laughs> but we should think, maybe this person has very special relation with Radha Krishna. How I know? How I can find out? This is, you cannot find online, on internet, on Google. You cannot, even you talk to someone, how you can know how much love this person have for God. It's impossible. So, just in case, always better think, it is a sadhu. And serving to sadhu, it is what is our way, what we are doing. So, very, very easy science. <laughs> and you will be purified and ignorance will be destroyed. So, by touching the feet of the Vaishnavas, by taking the dust on our heads, by doing the bhajan, the way how we was discussed, in a selfless way, what will happen then? We will be purified. And ignorance will be destroyed. So our ignorance, our anarthas, is what is the obstacle to have this love, to live in that other world. So that's why we cannot enter to, to that world, because we have some impurities, some ignorance. So we need to clear these things. How we clear this? By budget. And with the dust of the lot seeds of the world. So, two things Naratam Dastakura advised us to do here, and many did that. In the commentaries, my Guru Maharaj was saying that even from the times of Prahlad Maharaj, this knowledge was there. So, it is well-known fact in the whole creation in Vedas they proclaim the glory of this process. It's a science. It's a, it's a greater science. Because 
all the equations never been changed. Whatever written in Shrimad Bhagavatam millions of years ago still works now. Even present science, they always change in laws. This and that, the law is changed and then they, oh sorry, we didn't know about this law, it doesn't work like this. But the laws which describe in Vedas, they are always constantly same. So this is science. So in the science said this work like this. You stay amongst the devotees, serve them selflessly, touch, take the dust from their lotus feet and you will be purified. And ignorance will go. So this is an advice from Naratam Dastakur and this is uh, we can experience. And then we can gain transcendental experience, enter to that world and gain that experience. Who don't want to be in that other world? It's very beautiful. So many beautiful trees, plants, animals. From the whole galaxy and all universe was collected there. So, the, the way to that another world, I think everyone is now clear about how to end it. <laughs> now just time for training. Time for testing ourselves. It's been tested by Radha Krishna, by Guru, by Vaishnavas. It's a constant test. It's not like, all right, I passed the test, now I can relax. <laughs> I'm pure now, all right. <laughs> I'm totally selfless, all right, so now I can relax. No. Even in transcendental world, it will continue. We will reach to Prema, then there will also be incarnating in our transcendental form, and then from Prema it goes to Mahabhav, more deeper, more selfless. So here is the beginning. We will take birth in uh, uh, earth when Krishna will come to play with us. And this is not going to be a physical body. We will take birth in the womb of the gopi, of the gopis in Varshana. According to the Raghavad Machandrika, if you sink in all life in your spiritual form, you are serving Radha Krishna. So when you live in this body, you go in and take in birth in Varshana, and then you grow in there and become a servant of Radharani. And that's it, no more suffering of material type. There is a spiritual type of suffering there. It's a love suffering of separation. But this is a... everyone want that. Suffering out of love is something good. Suffering out of our demands not meet, our expectations do not meet, then it is very very different type of suffering. So we can make a choice, I better suffer from love <laughs> than suffer that somebody didn't give me something, didn't talk to me the way I wanted, did not respect me the way I deserve it. 
We are constantly suffering about these things here. I am not respected enough. <laughs> Vaishnavas, they think I should not get any respect. That's better. If I don't get the respect, that's much better. Vaishnavas think like this. If somebody wants to serve them, they say, no, 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 no need. I, I try to do myself this and that. They try not to take the service. They try to serve, but somebody offers service, they try not to, not to accept the service. If they do, they do this also out of service, because there's a, a service as a receiving gift, for example. It is a service to Vaishnava. If you're thinking, I'm going to serve to Vaishnava by receiving the gift, because he wanted so, this is going to be service. So even getting something in the mind of thinking that you are serving, it is also selfless. <laughs> it's a tricky one. <laughs> like some uh, devotee may give you a gift. Mm -hmm. And you will think, no, no, I will not accept. I don't want to take service. But because you think you want to satisfy devotee by letting you ah. serve him. So you are, you are doing the service by accepting the gift. This is also, it's a type of a service. Yes, it is a service. Yes, because otherwise, if someone will give a gift to a Vaishnava yes. and they will not accept, that person might be offended. offended. Yes, so, and this what would be a problem. Yes, yeah. it could be. You have to be. If you don't like, you have to be very lovingly accepted. Yes. Similarly, if you don't take prasad, no, 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 I'm full, mm -hmm. you're doing a problem. You have to take it. At least something Mercy has to be taken. coming and it says, no, I don't need it. Yeah. You no know, need, you keep it on the head and keep it somewhere. And after that you, you eat it. or distribute, but you have to accept. Mm. Yeah. When mercy will come, who knows? Yeah, like the story of All Akadashi. Why, why, we, why we need the association of myself? Because we learn to give and take. So we want to put my body in between them that they will teach me everything. So we come to Vrindavan, we don't know anything, but by living you will learn how to be. What you cannot know, in your country. They will always keep you in ignorance, ignorant people association. Mm -hmm. You do by looking others, na? That is the point. We can taste how much the selflessness in the society how much anger there it means unsatisfied Desire. desires. That how much is the selfishness is there. So you can immediately understand is this is a good association or not. Everyone's getting angry any time in any point in any <laughs> And whenever is less anger, whatever situation rises. And you see no anger. Means there is more selflessness. There is no desires to be fulfilled and desires to, to get something. So, and there is happiness and joy there only. Because no one expecting anything, no one desire anything. Everyone trying to serve, so everyone's happy all the time. So that's why people are get attracted here, because these things are exist in this place, so everyone get attracted. Because it's on demand, it's not available in any other places. And that's why everyone come to Rajadam and stay in here, because there is an entrance to another world, where is the whole world like this. Every single person there selfless. 
system is different. Yes. And here, it is like in between of that material world and the transcendental world. A testing, a training ground. Because something coming, it's not just our things. It is coming from Radha Krishna, from Parivar, from Lion. We do not owners of this knowledge. We are only channels for them. So we are trying to the capture also, this. Also by bhajan you can realize and by the grace of the dust of the Vaishnava, this will happen in life. No other way. If you like to do this, then this is the dust of Vaishnava. To be humble with him to learn. And secondly, your pleasure, your time to be. Bhajan means how much time you are giving for your speech or You want to be in your identity. Yes, you He is our best friend. For his three days, we have to use his time full time. <laughs> Morning, afternoon, evening, he is ready to give class. Right? I don't have desire, so <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what is going to happen. <laughs> we know each rice, dal, sabji. You have to arrange only he eat cucumber, tomato, and leaf of uh, what is spinach. His spinach is already there in fridge. <laughs> now somebody he has to responsible or somebody has to take responsibility to make this plate for him. And what he wants you have to In the fridge, everything I arrange. This is green. <laughs> so, but for that, if you need, you have to buy and keep and do seva. Vaishnav seva. Yes? I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's so much trouble you get in them too. No trouble. It's everything about I want to come back later to this point. We talk about the definition of who is sadhu. Because you gave a scriptural definition of the sadhu, you mm -hmm. used chanting, you know, the holy name, and very, 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 Mara, and you know, that, uh, but Maharaj was giving a little bit different definition about well, the, the nature, Baba is telling me. about the nature of insight, because uh, nowadays... This is the, mm -hmm. this is the Matra, who is trying to become Vaishnava, mm -hmm. you know, become sadhu. Mm -hmm. Sadhu is different. Mm -hmm. Is a nature. Sadhu become nature. The nature inside. Is not sadhu like a looking sadhu mm -hmm. or baba. He fall want to be a baba or sannyas, but he is not sannyas or sadhu. Sadhu is a different thing. Varna ashram is different thing. Sadhu centrally is different thing. Sadhu means sent. He, in any religion there is a sadhu. It's not meaning that religion is based on that. You see, in the Catholic also many saints I see. They were totally involved with the Jesus prayer and they are living in the cave and they become like a renounced person. They are also saints. Highly elevated. I meet with someone like, like the Asis. They are only full uh, 
full service for the humanities and how he, why he do? Because he was so connected with Lord. Like Mahaprabhu, or Ma Rupa Goswami brother. No, one more. Who is a Ram Bhakta? He, he took initiation to become Krishna Bhakta, but he cannot go. 